Hello, Timothy Hoagie again. We're going to do a short video today on the three suffixal conventions that we teach children. And we start this very early when we work with children starting first grade. And we have these three suffixal conventions in our language. Those are the only three suffixal conventions that we have. And they make up every word in, in, or all of the words, larger words in our language. So if it is more than one base, it's going to, and it has a suffix, it uses one of these conventions. So the first one we're going to take a look at is the single non-syllabic E. If we have the word H-A-V, single non-syllabic E, we call this a single non-syllabic E because it's not representing any pronunciation. Some people refer to it as a silent E. In our reading clinic, we refer to it as a single non-syllabic E. And we want to add a suffix. We do a word sum like this. This is a plus sign. And we may have I-N-G. We're going to check this joint. So we're going to determine, do we have do we, do we have a single non syllabic E? So we do have, we ask these three questions. Does the suffix begin with the vowel? And the answer is yes. Then we're going to check, is the E single? Yes. Is it non syllabic? Yes. Therefore, we replace it. We cross it out, we replace it, and we rewrite it. So we have a rewrite arrow. It's not called an equal sign. It's not equaling anything. It's called rewrite. So we would state the word sum like this. H-A-V, single non syllabic E, plus I-N-G, rewritten as. Check your joints. And then we, after checking the joints, we would have them stated like this. H-A-V, replace the E, plus I-N-G, is rewritten as H-A-V, replace the E, ING. So I'm having a good day. So we ask them to state, replace the E, because we want them really know or see the E, even though it isn't there. The E is always there because it's part of the base. Uh, on a side note here, why do we have the E on the end of words that end with a V? In the English language, no English word ends with a V, therefore we put the E. That's why it's there. So that's one. So that's one, one of our suffix or conventions. The second one is doubling. And doubling, C U T plus I N G. So now we're taking a look at do we double the consonant? And if we do, we use the same letter. So we take a look, and if our suffix begins with a vowel, if we have one consonant and we have one vowel before that consonant, we double the consonant. Here's the way we do it. Check our joins. We do double, so we put a small T up there. We don't cross anything out. We're doubling. We state it like this. C-U, double the T, plus I-N-G, rewritten as C-U, double T, I-N-G. In this case, it is a double T because you actually did double it. There are other times in our language we may have two subsequent letters, but they are not double. So we always ask them to state it double. Now with doubling, it only occurs on the base. Here's your base, C-U-T. It only occurs with the base. It doesn't occur with another suffix. I'm going to give you an example with the other two suffix conventions. They can occur with suffixes. And our last one is a Y-I toggle. So we may have something like this. B, A, B, single non syllabic E, plus A, Y, plus E, S, rewritten as. And here we would always start it that and we work towards the base. So we check our joints. Is Y a suffix? Yes. So do we have a vowel suffix? Yes. This is a suffix. So we're we're not going to cause two letters. If we change the Y, our suffix does not start with an I. We can never have two I's together, so we don't double, we don't do a Y I toggle if we cause two, if we're going to have two I's together, like in crying or babying. We would not, but in this case, it's not going to cause a double, uh, it to, 
to have two Y's. So we do what we call a YI toggle. Toggling means if I can't use the Y, I use an I. I don't use another letter, I use an I. If I can't use the I, I may use the Y. I don't grab another letter to, to substitute. And in this case, I put the I right above the Y. I want to show a YI toggle. Then I check this join. And do I have a vowel suffix? Yes. Do I have a single, non syllabic E? Yes. I cross it out. So now I have, here, I have two suffix or conventions to make the word babies. B A B, single non syllabic E. We replace the E plus Y, do a YI toggle plus ES is rewritten as B A B, replace the E, YI toggle, ES. Notice the pause. I ask children to pause between them so they know they're singling that there's a break there. And your word looks like this. So those are your three suffixing conventions. Those are the only three that we have. And I promised you I would take a look at one other that would have multiple suffixes. So let's take a look at this one. So look, we have S-A-N, single non e plus I-T, single non e plus I-Z-E, or single non e plus I-N-G, is rewritten as. So we start here, and we check the joins, single non e because I have a vowel suffix here. I do have a single non e again, vowel suffix. I do have a single non e vowel suffix, I replace that. So look at, in order to get the word sanitizing, we have to replace single non syllabic E three times. Single non syllabic E, YI toggle, and doubling are the only three, three suffixal conventions that we have to make up our language. And we end up with S A N, replace the E, I T, replace the E, I Z, replace the E, I N G. And S-A-N-E means sound in body or mind. So you can be sane, sound in mind, or when we're dealing with sanitizing our hands, we're sound in, in, in body. So those are the three suffix and conventions we teach children early on, and they learn them very quickly because they're the ones that are the most important. So definitely we'll want to start with first graders and then move that on up into to high school. So, any questions? Please email me or call me. Thank you.